Healthy Eating Made Easy is a blueprint for healthy eating and is one of the most effective and scientifically validated means to feel great for good and stay well for life. We simplified Healthy Eating Made Easy into five steps. All you have to do is learn a few basic guidelines about each step, put them into day-to-day practice, and you'll have mastered the art of optimal nutrition. The Healthy Eating Made Easy webinar series includes five short sessions that can be viewed at your convenience. Each session will focus on specific topics. In session one, you'll learn how to focus on whole grains. Session two will teach you the facts on fat. In session three, you'll learn the benefits of eating more fruits and veggies. Session four teaches you how to power up with healthy protein. And in session five, you'll learn how to rethink your drink. Welcome to session one of the Healthy Eating Made Easy series. In this session, you'll learn how easy it is to focus on whole grains for better health. In this session, we'll discuss high and low fiber carbohydrates, the great white hazards cycle, the benefits of dark chocolate, a strategy to stay focused on whole grains, and independence member resources. Let's get started. A grain contains three parts, bran, germ, and endosperm. The bran is the outer hard shell of the grain. It is the part of the grain that provides the most fiber and most of the B vitamins and minerals. The germ is the next layer and is packed with nutrients, including essential fatty acids and vitamin E. The endosperm is the soft part in the center of the grain. It contains the starch. Whole grain means that the entire grain kernel is in the food. If you eat a whole grain food, it contains the bran, germ, and endosperm, so you get all the nutrients that whole grains have to offer. If you eat a refined grain food, it contains only the endosperm, or the starchy part, so you miss out on a lot of vitamins and minerals. Because the whole grains contain the entire grain, they are much more nutritious than refined grains. Carbohydrates often get a bad rap, especially when it comes to weight gain. But carbohydrates are not all bad. Because of their numerous health benefits, carbohydrates have a rightful place in your diet. In fact, your body needs carbohydrates to function well. The best way to focus on whole grains is to choose the healthier types of carbohydrates and then enjoy them in moderation. Let's take a look at all the different types of carbohydrates. True whole grains are among the most powerful, disease-fighting foods nature has given us. Whole grains retain all of their nutritional goodness. When whole grains are refined and processed into products like white flour and white rice, their outer bran coat and their inner germ portions are removed. Whole grains are excellent sources of vitamin E, B vitamins, fiber, and the minerals zinc, iron, and magnesium. People who eat the most grains weigh less and are less likely to develop heart disease, type 2 diabetes, cancers, metabolic syndrome, and digestive diseases. Whole grains are digested more slowly, so they make you feel full for longer periods of time. Some examples of whole grains include brown rice, oatmeal, and quinoa. Fiber is a type of carbohydrate that comes from plant foods, so there's no fiber in animal products such as milk, eggs, meat, poultry, and fish. Fiber is the indigestible part of plant foods, including fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, and legumes. When you consume dietary fiber, most of it passes through the intestines and is not digested. For good health, adults need to try to eat 25 to 30 grams of fiber each day. Most Americans do not consume nearly enough fiber in their diet, so while it is wise to aim for this goal, any increase in fiber in your diet can be beneficial. Beans are an excellent source of fiber. They are all versatile, convenient, inexpensive, tasty, satisfying, and remarkably good for you. A single cup of beans provides 12 grams of fiber. All beans are healthy options, but here's a list of some favorites. Lima beans, chickpeas, and lentils. It's very simple to identify the bad carbs because they are all white. This group of carbs includes white flour products, white rice, white potatoes, and sugar. Scientifically, they are known as the refined, high glycemic carbs, but we refer to them as what they really are, the great white hazards. This particular group of carbs has been repeatedly linked to a long list of adverse outcomes, including weight gain, obesity, type 2 diabetes, certain cancers, 
fatigue, and insulin resistance. Some carbs, because of their makeup, are more slowly digested, giving rise to a more gradual and lower blood glucose response, while others are more quickly digested, giving rise to a more rapid and high blood glucose response. Foods such as white bread, white rice, and white potatoes are the carbs that are easily digested, thus sending blood glucose levels soaring. Because of their ability to send blood glucose levels up high and fast, the great white hazards can predispose to several problems, including weight gain, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and even cancer. Some carbs, because of their makeup, are more slowly digested, giving rise to a more gradual and lower blood glucose response, while others are more quickly digested, giving rise to a more rapid and high blood glucose response. Foods such as white bread, white rice, and white potatoes are the carbs that are easily digested, thus sending blood glucose levels soaring. Because of their ability to send blood glucose levels up high and fast, the great white hazards can predispose to several problems, including weight gain, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and even cancer. Now that you have a better understanding on the glycemic response of the great white hazards, I can explain how they make you gain weight. Take, for example, a white bagel. If you eat the white bagel, which causes your blood glucose and blood insulin to spike, followed by a quick blood glucose plummet and leaving you unsatisfied and still hungry. No matter what level of glucose enters your bloodstream, shortly thereafter, a matching amount of insulin is released. Insulin is a fat-storing anabolic hormone. When insulin is released into your bloodstream, especially at high levels, it directs your body to store energy and deposit fat. If you want to lose weight or maintain your weight, you must make an effort to eliminate or at least limit the bad carbohydrates. The glycemic index is a great tool that can help you do this. The glycemic index measures how a carbohydrate-containing food raises blood glucose. The lower the food's glycemic index, the less it affects blood sugar and insulin levels. Here are some popular foods along with their ranking on the glycemic index. It's pretty clear that the white carbs and sweetest foods rank high on the glycemic index, while the whole grain and high-fiber foods rank low. On the bright side, dark chocolate is truly a healthy treat. It has been shown to boost brain power, elevate mood, improve cardiovascular health, suppress appetite by providing a greater feeling of satisfaction and satiety than other sweets, and hinders blood glucose spikes to make dark chocolate your sweet of choice. Now it's time to strategize a plan of action to guide you in replacing the wrong carbs with the right ones. Recognize when you have a craving. Restrict foods that drop your blood sugar. Think great white hazards. Eat three meals daily. Have a healthy protein at each meal. Increase high-fiber carbs like beans, legumes, and whole grains. Find healthy ways to indulge your sweet tooth. Aim for a balanced carb diet rather than a low-carb diet. Avoid foods made from white flour. Choose 100% whole grain and multi-grain varieties instead. Strive to have at least one serving of beans every day. Restrict sugars and sweets. Choose a sensible portion of high-quality dark chocolate or fresh fruit as your sweet of choice. Thank you for participating in Session 1 of the Healthy Eating Made Easy webinar series. Here's a list of resources for Independence members.